Hello and welcome to the video. This is part of the Antenna Lab series and it's to answer a question that an awful lot of you have asked and that is what happens if you cover the receiver antennas with heat shrink and cable ties. Now I have built an awful lot of quadcopters and it's something that I do regularly just to make sure that the antennas for the radio don't fall into the props. In fact, recently I've started been doing half and half. I don't know if you can see that on the video, but a lot of people in the Antenna Lab questions and comments and fantastic interaction. Thank you everyone that's got involved with this. It's something that Greg and I uh, want to continue doing to answer these questions, as we kind of said, like, almost like a Mythbusters for FPV and radio antennas, is what happens to the radio receiver? You know, how bad is it if you cover up the antenna with a cable tie and heat shrink as we do an awful lot when we're building these things. Because as we saw in one of the other videos, covering your FPV antenna with some kind of plastic isn't a great idea. So what Greg did, he got a piece of RG178, which is the very thin coax cable, stripped that coax cable down, leaving the internal conductor, and then tuned that active element to 2453.55555 megahertz, or 2.4 gigahertz. Now this is the initial trace off the machine that shows that antenna naked before he put uh, the heat shrink and before he put the cable tie on it as well. And if you're not sure what you're looking at here, go and have a look at the other Antenna Lab series videos. I go through it in some detail and Greg helps explain how to read this. But there's a VSWR of about 1.8 868 and it's tuned at again at about 2.453 gigahertz. Now what he's done is then gone and covered that up with heat shrink and also a cable tie like an awful lot of us do and that trace the original trace is now blue the new trace with the extra pieces on is this yellow trace here and there's a couple of things that have changed the tune of the actual antenna itself has changed a little bit. So now the tune of the antenna is now 2.374 gigahertz. And the other thing as well is the VSWR at the actual frequency that we're interested in, which is where that little red triangle is, is now up at a whopping 2.7 VSWR. So there is an impact, but it isn't massive. Now, a VSWR of about 1.86 means about 91% of the energy is radiated, and that also works the other way around as well. And a VSWR of about 2.7 is about 77%. So working out the numbers, it means that by covering the antennas, what Greg is finding is that it means that you lose about 14% of the signal. Now, in reality, is that terrible well most of us are flying around these small things i mean this is the um, armatan gecko really beautiful little three inch quad and i can get well beyond my visual line of sight with this and with traditional 2.4 gig radios in a nice quiet rf environment most of us on legal power can get up to the kind of one and a half kilometer range without any issues at all and those who are racing will never get into a situation, unless they're extremely lucky, where covering the antennas is going to cause them a problem. So the advice is, if you are going for super duper range, then don't cover the active elements of your antennas. Keep them uncovered as they come in the box. If you want to keep them safe, then it's absolutely fine to cover them up. You're not losing an awful lot. You do lose a little bit and there is an impact, but it's not as big as you'd expect. In fact, there's probably more detrimental effect by badly rooting the antennas on the model itself. And I think that's the next video that Greg and I will do. We'll actually route antennas uh, close to both the goggles and also on the models themselves to see how that affects how the antennas perform and how much signal you get out as well. Thanks for watching the video and watching right to the very end. You can find me in all the usual places on social media and if you like the video and like what I'm doing here then hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon too. If you really like what I'm doing you can go the extra mile and become one of my Patreons for access to me directly for support and also giveaways and regular updates too.
If you're looking for particular content, then check out the playlist. I organize all of my videos into playlists. So if you're looking for a particular topic, you can find everything here. If it's called Introduction To, it's designed to start very simply and build on that simple introduction to teach you all about it. If it's called For Beginners, then that is really aimed at people who are brand new to that part of the hobby. You can also search on YouTube for anything that you're interested in using the search function at the top. So iNav Painless 360 will find all of my videos and even the playlists around iNav. So thanks again for watching and happy flying.